According to the Washington Post, millions of families are at risk of eviction. Countless thousands of others have had to file bankruptcies or endure foreclosures. I've been pouring through newspapers ever since May of 2021 in hopes of finding word of programs that can help me. My searches have been unsuccessful because story after story, article after article have for the most part told a one-sided account. $46 billion worth of programs have risen to be the champion of certain people affected by this crisis, the tenant. I have rarely found anything in mainstream media that conveyed my side of the story. I am the small landlord. I haven't received rent for my property since March of 2020. The newspapers say it's because of the pandemic. I say it's due to a select group of people who have chosen to use what has happened in the world to get over on people like me. This is my story. Happy Monday, y'all. Today is July 5th. And so... I hired the property manager. I'm not sure if you guys know that. Um, but basically, it's funny because, well, what I love is nobody's been soliciting me. You know, like the lawyer didn't solicit me. I was simply asked questions. He was giving me answers. And he even reviewed my lease and all kinds of stuff without mentioning a penny. Um, then I asked about solicit using him. And he told me the $700 retainer fee. But then I said, but by that point, all I really needed was the letter drafted up. You know, because there is a chance that she could go ahead and move out on her own with receiving notice. So just want the notice drafted. And I wanted it to come from a place official because, of course, I could have drafted a notice um, thanks to the person who I am now using as my property manager. She had been sending me all kind of um, templates that she has successfully used in the past. Um, but for me, I wanted a letterhead. I wanted it to be on an official letterhead coming from a place that had more authority than me since so she already had a history of saying to hell with what I say, the landlord, right? So I was willing to pay for that. So I paid $99 for that letterhead. And I was very pleased with the way the lawyer worked, but very thorough, very responsive, um, and gave me a lot of information. He is now reviewing my videos to make sure that, you know, all is kosher, which he said to me, you know, before he reviewed them, that he believes they are, they are, as long as I'm telling the truth and what I'm saying is factual, in my experience, I cannot be held liable. What I'm doing is teaching my experience as I'm going through my experience to those who may be in a similar situation or for those who may find themselves is something in the future or for those who just want to be entertained that's what it is right so in the meantime I was sitting there and I was like okay I had sent my tenant notices like basically trying to work out final walkthroughs final inspections key return things like that but of course y'all know she got me blocked there's no way I can necessarily confirm communication with her like I can send a one-sided letter but there's no way that I can confirm her receipt of anything or her response to anything or coordination to anything like I know like a lot of people in the comments have been like reschedule another inspection that's fine and dandy but you can reschedule just to show up and for nobody to answer the door and for them to act like I didn't get noticed and I'm not down with all of that just use your king going house I'm not down with that people are crazy these days ain't and plus it wouldn't be me going in the house it'd be somebody else like I'm not doing I'm not playing them games um so I'm not down with somebody possibly being injured or putting anybody at risk putting anybody in a risky uncertain situation okay so we're not doing that 
And when we do do that, it will be with the sheriff by our sides with us. So that's that right there. So I was like, hey, let me, because of course we could do the whole thing where some call from a different number, call from this, call from that. But nothing stops somebody who doesn't want to talk to you from talking to you. You could always hang up, right? So I said, let me just go ahead and employ a third party into this. Hence, my property manager, who has been super helpful long before this and super responsive. Like, just all of the things that I would look for if I was to hire somebody. And it, I love that she is a woman. I love that. Now, it's so funny because there's so many people in my comments are like, women, 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 women need men. But I'm all down for girl power. We got this, y'all, because there's too many people to include a lot of people in my comments trying to give women and girls the message, the branding, that you can't do shit unless you have a man beside you or a man doing it for you. What message are we giving to our girls out there? To all of these guys leaving messaging like this, is this what you get to the women and the girls that you have in your life? This is what you tell them? You know how many women are in abusive situations, whether it's physical, emotional, mental, because they have no other choice, because they feel like they had no other choice, because they were set up for no other choice? See, we're going on a whole other conversation that this wasn't even meant to be on. But that's why I'm such an advocate for women finding their power, finding their voice, knowing that you got this. Even if you make a mistake, it's okay. Especially, especially if you bring in your own money. I bring in my own money. But yet there's so many guys in the comments saying, yeah, you bring in this money, but you need a man to tell you what to do with it. Oh, please. Ugh. Anyways. So I hired a property manager. And now, mind you, I've called, I'm not going to say dozens, but close to property managers of all races, of all genders, all of that. Because again, when I'm looking for help, I am looking for the best person for the job. Not necessarily a particular type of person or a particular looking person. I'm looking for the best person for the job. Needless to say, they've all blown me off. Y'all heard the earliest stories, I believe. I believe y'all heard the earliest stories about the people who basically gave me, you go do this on your own, go do that. Well, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking to employ somebody. You people who just didn't want the job, right? Because they were already swamped with jobs of their own or, as they said, they just don't do that anymore for one reason or another. I am not going to beg somebody to do work that they don't want to do. That's just the wrong answer. That's not even a good vibrational com combination. So anyways, I reached back out to her, set up a phone call with her to run my ideas by her. And my ideas was I wanted to know if I could hire her to facilitate, to manage, to project manage this project of getting this tenant out of my home. And so we agreed upon a number and she was on it that day. Like even before I signed any contracts, even before I gave her any money, she was on it. She went to the resident in question, knocked on the door. There was no answer. So she left a card with her information and then she sent her a very professional and thorough email introducing herself, letting them her know that she's now the, pro the property manager. And she will be helping to facilitate her move out experience and to let her know if there's anything that she can do to assist her in an easy transition. I mean, just very professional and basically letting her know that she wanted to arrange three things in particular. That is the final walkthrough and inspection, the, the exchange of keys, as well as collecting a forwarding address for her deposit. Now, we all know she ain't getting no deposit back, but. Again, part of the process is even when I don't give a deposit back, I have 45 days to give her information as to what and what not, right? Her deposit was $15.50 and out of that $15.50, here's the itemized list of what 
went with that 50 for 50. Now, first of all, we all know that it went to rent. Now, I do know that I read somewhere, or I, I don't even remember, but somewhere, some states, rent owed cannot be taken deducted from the deposit. But that is not the case in Maryland. Rent owed can be deducted from the deposit, as well as damages, so on and so forth. So the bottom line is, I do my thorough list to include damages. Now, normal wear and tear can't be considered damage. Um, like, for instance, a worn out carpet for 12 years cannot be considered damage unless there's just places where the carpet was cut up, which it was, you know, from accidents, from things spilled um, and, and damage like that. That can be deducted. Um, and then, you know, things that are that go beyond wear and tear. So once we itemize all of that, we need a forwarding address to give her this information. And that's where we are right now. So, so far, my property manager has personally went to the property, has personally left correspondence at the property, and then also verified that the correspondence I left at the property, the um, termination of tenancy notice, was, not, was no longer there on the door. So that was gone. Um, and then she also sent an email as well as mail. She also mailed this stuff out in the mail. Right? And that's where we're at. And so far, she has gotten no response from the tenant. I've gotten no response from the tenant. Um, so, yeah. That's where we're at with this. Um, it's, just, it's certainly interesting. I know a lot of people are like, oh, yeah, you're frustrated, you're stressed. Actually, I'm not. I'm not. You know what frustrates and stresses me more? What frustrates me or stresses me more is the pressure I put on my own self in my week-to-week -week schedule. All the stuff that I'm that I attempt to accomplish between my day job, my YouTube job, and just my own personal life. That's what I get kind of, you know, my bandwidth runs short on because I'd be like, yo, I'm tired. You know, working 10 hour days and so on and so forth and still creating content and doing all of that. Y'all see, we multitasking. Like while I'm on my way to the office, this is a holiday. Today, this Monday is a holiday. I'm on my way to the office recording the video because we got to get it all done when we can we don't always have the luxury of sitting down setting up camera setting up cameras and lights and sitting down talking even though you know that would be cute we don't always have that luxury so that's what stresses me more this situation i'm not stressed about i'm not because i do know that this too shall pass i do know that all things are working out for my greater good i do know that all is well and all will be okay i do know those things and as um jay says my boyfriend she can't just live there forever. Like, whoever whoever heard of somebody just living somewhere forever for free? Who's ever heard of that? So there's so every day that goes by is a day closer to this situation being resolved. But in the meantime, I'm more excited than frustrated. I'm excited because we, me, y'all, we get to learn some new things. We get to add some things to our tool belt. We're networking. We're meeting some awesome people in this industry as, um, even if not points of contact or people that I may need in the future because y'all know we don't want to be in this business. But people that I can refer other people to because I love being able to say, here's a credited source that I had a good experience with. We're collecting these things, you know, and um, we're, we're, we're expanding, we're growing. Without a little bit of contrast, there's no room for growth. If everything in your life, if day in, day out, everything was hunky-dory smooth, what is there really to push you into growth and expansion? Because as humans, we're always going to do what's comfortable. We are. And, but because we all, as humans, we all strive for growth and we all crave growth, whether we know it or not, sometimes we create our own little dramas in our lives for growth. But we can do that in a more productive manner. So even with this situation, we're being productive about this. We're going to learn. We're going to, you know, teach. We're going to heal for ourselves. I, I, have, I can't do nothing about that tenant. She's been in her situation for over 12 years. And I haven't necessarily seen any growth or change from her. I haven't. 
I'm about to say something else being messy. But the point is, she's been there for 12 years. Her portion of the rent hasn't increased so dramatically that we could see like, oh girl, you're doing good. You got a job, you got a career, you're moving towards something, you're getting more money. So now they want you to pay for your own stuff, take off the training wheels and pay for your own stuff, which even that is a good thing. Let me tell you guys, like if you're on section eight, even if you have a voucher, now I don't know what the rules are for losing for when you're no longer qualified for a voucher. I don't know what the money rules are. Like if you make this amount of money, you're no longer qualified. I don't know how that works. But to know that even if you made some money of your own and got some experience of your own, which is what I would do, I would start like collecting experience so that I could move that to the next job and the next job or whatever. And knowing that, okay, guess what? Now for my voucher, I have to pay a thousand dollars a month and they pay the discount. I would think of it as a discount. They pay the difference, which is my discount. I would do that to know that if I fell back on hard times or lost a job, all I had to do was submit my new income statements to Section 8 and they would readjust it and I would go back to paying less. I would do that. I, I would do that. But again, I don't know the rules of Section 8. Trust me, I don't know because they did some stuff I didn't know that they were going to do. Um, that had I known, I would have played my cards differently. And I think that was more of my reasoning for the video too, was maybe there was going to be somebody out there who did know and could give me some solid advice. Um, don't do this. Or if you do do this, make sure you put it like this, that sort of thing, um, to protect my interests to the, you know, as much as possible, but that didn't happen. Um, so that's where we are. That's the update. 